James Adam, the Abedonian carpenter who became the ideal Otago colonist and recruited thousands more to follow him to New Zealand. James Adam was a fitty boy. Growing up here at Lynx Street in the fishing harbour area of Aberdeen, known as Foot D or Fitty to the locals. He was one of the younger members of a large family born in 1822 to a ship's carpenter. Now James had a rather rambunctious childhood here according to his own account, earning notoriety for breaking windows, frequently in trouble at school and on two occasions almost drowning in the harbour. After beginning work at the age of 10 in the local rope works, he ran away from home when he was 16 and had various adventures in England as a navvy and sailor. But he eventually returned home, welcomed back as the prodigal son, and settled down to follow his father's trade. In 1845 he married Margaret Mill. They already had one child and Adam had been appointed presenter at Aberdeen's West Free Church, that means the man who led the congregation in singing, when he chanced upon the fact that there was to be a talk at the church one night in 1847 by the Reverend Thomas Burns to promote the planned free church settlement in Otago. Now since Adam had already been thinking about emigrating to America, he thought he'd like to hear about the South Seas alternative. And impressed by Burns's presentation, he made himself known at the end of the talk. When Burns heard that Adam was the West Church's presenter, he invited him to come to Otago and become presenter for his congregation there. The offer came with free passage to New Zealand for his family, and despite his wife's strongly expressed reluctance, the Adams were among the steerage passengers on the Philip Lang later that year. James quickly proved himself to be the ideal colonist. As soon as the ship weighed anchor at Port Chalmers, he was keen to explore the site of Dunedin. Within days, he'd recruited two Maori to help him build a basic house, a primitive foray right here where the Grand Casino is today. It was the first such house built by the Pioneer Party in Dunedin, and James quickly picked up further work building houses and other buildings for his fellow pioneers. He also began building boats, one of which he called the Bon Accord, after Aberdeen's town motto. When he lost the use of the Fuddy site in High Street, after the leasehold was bought out from under him, he used a boat to relocate to what was then called Goat Hill in Anderson's Bay, where he established his first small farm. Not only was James Adam a highly practical and adaptable tradesman, with skills and an enthusiastic attitude that were hugely beneficial to the embryonic settlement, he was also a devout free church man. Despite his humble origins, he quickly emerged as a leader among the settlers and won election to the first provincial government in 1853. When money was voted to support assisted immigration again in 1856, Captain Cargill asked James Adam to go back to Scotland as the province's immigrant recruiter with a mission to get more people just like himself. In 1857-58, he crisscrossed Scotland and England, speaking in churches and halls and recruiting thousands of new settlers to come to Otago. In 1873, he did the same job for the central government, again recruiting thousands of new immigrants. And he also published a book about his own experiences as a colonist that attracted many more. His wife Margaret died while he was away in Scotland during his first stint as a recruiter, leaving their five young children to be looked after by neighbours. On his return, James withdrew from public life to care for his family. But in 1861, he married again to Jesse Essam, a newly arrived immigrant from Aberdeen. They would have four children together, though sadly two died in childhood. James was then able to return to politics, being re-elected to the provincial council, and later undertaking his second term as immigration agent. Meantime, however, James Adam, the ship's carpenter, had reinvented himself in Otago as a substantial farmer, exemplifying the dream of so many Scottish immigrants of a return to the land 
Even when, like Adam, they actually came from a city background. Adam actually took the value of his fee as an immigrant recruiter in land, acquiring a substantial acreage on the Tokamariro Plain at Adam's Flat, where he ran 4,000 sheep. But when gold was discovered on his land in the early 1860s, he exchanged that farm for another one twice the size here near Moneymore, just south of Milton, which he also called Bon Accord. Here he built a substantial house and lived out the rest of his life. When he died in 1908, aged 86, he was interned in a family vault on the property. Now the large house that formerly stood near here is long gone, and the impressive mausoleum of the family vault has been much reduced due to safety concerns in the 20th century. There's this remaining, the big headstone here as well. But if you wanted to get an enduring memorial to James Adams' influence on New Zealand, it would have to be in the hundreds and hundreds of families who came to Otago and New Zealand because of his efforts as an immigrant recruiter.